Hello, my name is Gao Ziyan. Today I'm presenting the work on a two-stage framework for learning to push annual objects. So pushing is an efficient and useful skill for manipulating objects. For example, rearranging objects to the new position, autonomously packing objects, clean the table by using a tool to push the garbage, or as a complement to grasp. So in order to manipulate a novel objects, robots need to be capable of discovering the physical properties of the objects, such as the center of mass, friction, and the like. For example, when pushing a cuboid at the same contact location with the same velocity, different location of the center of mass make, makes object motion greatly different. So in the first case, we can see the cuboid is moving in a pure, pure rotation However, in the second case, uh, the motion is a pure, pure, pure translation. In order to solve this problem, Li proposed a recurrent neural network to overcome the challenge by tracking a history of push interactions. However, this model requires uh, extensive action sam sampling, and the dynamics of the object motion is encoded just uh, implicitly. So in this work, we invest, investigated the problem of pushing objects with annual dynamics. Our goal is to develop a learning framework which can explore the dynamics of the object during interaction while efficiently push the object to the desired pose. Before diving into the proposed method, first I will introduce the terminologies used in the, this work. A pushing action can be defined by the start and terminate position of the pusher. C represents the contact point and N is the associated service normal. In order to distinguish a central math, we use uh, VCOM and PCOM. VCOM is mirrored directly from the image. However, PCOM is, uh, is an intrinsic parameters of the object. So it cannot be mirrored directly from the image. So this is our proposed uh, two-stage uh, framework. In the first stage, a grid planner utilizing the central math of the current object and the target object to minimize the relative position error. Uh, in the second stage, a bunch of action candidates are sampled from the predict action distribution by course action, uh, course action predictor. Then FDE is used to simulate uh, the future outcomes of these actions. Best action is selected whose future outcome is mostly, mostly close to the target. A physical property estimator receives successive, successive images and executed action recurrently to update its own uh, internal state to predict the PCOM. So here is the course action predictor. Um, feature extraction layers extract the feature maps from the input image. And uh, during feature aggregation, we plug in the PCOM information and in order to affect the, out the outcome of this model. And uh, in the final phase, we use mixed density net network to, pre to predict a mixed Gaussian distribution. So in this work, we utilize a plain neural network to predict the, the, out, the outcome of the action. The input contains the terminating position of the pusher contact point, surface normal, and the VCM, PCM of the current object. The, out, the output is the position and orientation of the object after executing this action. And for the physical property estimator, we utilize a recurrent neural network, which has a two layers of LSTM. The input is uh, two successive feature maps uh, extracted from the, the input images, and FT represent the VCM and the action. The, out the output is the estimated current PCM. During data collection, 
uh, this data is collected through ex extensive uh, simulations done using the Copaliasim robot simulator. Um, a cylinder is attached to the end link of the, the robot. A table is used as the working space and uh, a camera is mounted on the top, top of the table. We use nine different objects for training and uh, seven different objects for testing. So firstly, an object is loaded into the scene with a random post and a random PCOM. Then a sequence of push actions are sampled to interact with the object. Finally, we record Finally, we record the object mask and the executed action in each time step. The procedure was repeated multiple times. The data set contains more than 57 sequences of interactions between the robot and the different objects. So during training, we use PyTorch to implement our model and we use Adam to be the, the optimizer. We use uh, different loss functions to train the uh, the modules separately. So, uh, in order to to evaluate our proposed model, we conduct two different uh, two different experiments. In the first experiment, we evaluate how the number of action samples affect the performance. And we use the number of action samples from three to 500. And in this experiment, both initial and target ob object positions are sampled randomly. And the orientation difference is said to be 180 degrees. Compared with the, the evaluation settings in PushNet, our case is more challenging. For each experiment, for each test object, we repeat this experiment for 100 times. So this is box plot for pushing steps for successful pushing. The average number of pushing steps de decreased gradually, while the number of action samples increase, especially from the settings of 3 to 50 action samples. In the second experiment, we conduct two different objects, two different experiment, uh, rotating object and tra translating object. And we use three alternative settings based on the proposed modules in order to evaluate the learning modules inside the framework. And we can see the test model one, which utilized the ground PCM, performed best for almost every novel object. And test model three performed worst. In the experiment of pure rotation, test model two and the proposed model uh, performed uh, similar in terms of the mean, mean pushing steps. However, we uh, observed that the performance of the test model two varies greatly compared with the proposed model. Accuracy is computed by counting the number of su successful pushing. So for the accuracy, we found that there is a significant improvement from the setting of sampling three actions to, to 50, and there was no considerable improvement for other settings. And in the last two tables, we can see test model three, which don't use the FDE, which uh, always performs worse in pure translation and pure rotation experiment. So in conclusion, in this study, we proposed a two-stage framework with distangled learning modules for robot planner pushing. Our proposed framework allows exploring PCOM and the pushing novel object. Compared with the previous work, our method is efficient in sampling and can handle more challenging tasks. Despite the competitive advantages of the proposed framework, it has not been yet evaluated on the real platform, which will be our future work. Thanks for your attention.